All right, guys, what I'm doing here is uh, going to be bringing to you guys a short video series with some of your favorite IFBB pros, different influencers that are on social media, uh, just people that I can get some access to. And what I'm doing with this series is uh, putting it out there on Instagram, taking questions from you guys, um, you know, for people that you follow or, or that you're fans of. And I'm picking five questions out of all the questions I get for the uh, guests that I have on here. And uh, we're starting it today with, of course, Mr. HWMF himself, uh, none other than Seth Ferrosi. He is going to be kicking this off with the first video in this whole series. So how you doing, brother? <laughs> doing well. Good deal. Doing well, loving life. It's actually a nice day up here in PA, so I'm, I'll fucking take it. I love it. I was going to ask you that since I'll, I'll be up there Sunday. So weather's good. Uh, today it is. By Sunday, it will be shit again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's it's in the spring here in Western PA is a fucking nightmare. It's like uh, we have we have like three seasons. We have summer, which is hot. And then we have a muddy season, winter, another muddy season, which is just we just get so much fucking rain. It sucks. Um but no, it'll be, today's a nice day. It'll be a little overcast uh, when you come up and uh, a little chilly, but not, it, nonetheless, just Western PA weather. Yeah, it'll be good. We'll, we'll be in oh, yeah. mostly anyway. So cool. So I'm going to get started because, again, I want to keep these videos fairly short. I don't want to take a ton of time from any of the guests on here as I know everybody's busy. So first and foremost, thank you for coming on and spending some time here and answering these questions. And uh, Fuck yeah, man. thanks to everybody that from Instagram that, that put out a bunch of questions. So first question I have here is from Cass underscore nutrition. His question was, if you uh, were able to train or pick anyone as a training partner, you know, somebody that you maybe you haven't trained with, who would it be and why? Um, <clears throat> like a training partner is in like an everyday getting ready for a competition or pushing myself. Uh, it, it didn't specify, but even if, even if it was just a one, one time deal or something, maybe somebody you just have never trained with, but you'd love to train with. All right. So, uh, <laughs> I'm fortunate because I've been able to, I was able to train with some of the best bodybuilders to ever grace the fucking planet. Um, uh, uh such memorable experiences. I'm a huge Jay Cutler fan. I don't <laughs> think I'll ever not be a Jay Cutler fan. I've got to train with Jay, uh, a number of times I did cardio with Jay, for a whole weekend, whenever we, whenever I was at the same event as him, stayed in the same hotel, I'm like, fuck, this dude's got similar routine to me, like mm -hmm. cardio, breakfast. I'm like, spent the whole weekend. So huge fan. Uh, training with him in his prime, whenever I was in my prime, would definitely be something that I was like, yeah, that'd be because I, I emulated a lot of my philosophy off of Jay Cutler. Mm -hmm. So him in his heyday, like fucking prime Jay. <laughs> yeah, that'd have been a lot of fun to train with him. Um, the other guy, uh, I guess I'm not saying I'm a combination of the two of them, but, uh, my mindset with, uh, with my training and philosophy on attacking training and how I went about it was Jay Cutler and Dorian Yates. Okay, yeah. Uh, so me and my prime of fucking sauced out Seth training, <laughs> living it all up. I would love to train with prime Jay Cutler and prime Dorian Yates. Those two guys would be uh like to train with them every day for a month yeah that'd be that'd have been fucking that'd have been my shit and you know uh, you, you have trained with dorian or you never have no never no, i've never, never trained with dorian yeah. um i was able like i trained with phil heath i, I honey rambod was my yeah. fucking trainer dude i mean so the dude literally drove me into the ground and his philosophies uh his and my philosophies are why I looked like I did and why I have evolved into what I am today. I mean, the dude took me under his wing and, and pushed the ever loving fuck out of me. Um, so I'm, like I said, I'm, I think the reason I have the success I I've had in my career and, and business, bodybuilding, everything is because the people that I emulated, the people that I looked up to, the people that I got to hang around with was that, um, couldn't train with Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> fucking guy's an alien. It, it's not even like, uh, like, what am I going to do with Ronnie? He deadlift 800 fucking pounds? Now, no. Now you can. Now you can train with him now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, now. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, but uh, Prime Jay Cutler and Prime Dorian Yates, those are the two. Were those you on, um, 
Were you on? Are you on one of the FST seven DVDs also? Mm -hmm. Right, you are. Oh yeah, I, I have. Yeah, the, the I second have, one. I think I have two of those. You know, they're old. Obviously, old as fuck now. But uh, I, I remember that you, you were really young back then when you were doing. Oh, dude, I was 25, 26 years old. That's yeah. like 10, 11 years ago. And uh, but yeah, dude, I was. I mean, that was whenever Honey was becoming into his prime of mm -hmm. be, being a trainer. Like he was the, known as the pro creator, turned a ton of amateurs pro. He was, you know, pioneering him, George Farah, Chad Nicholas. Like, uh, all those guys were leading the way on, on, on being a guru in the industry. And, uh, I mean, he obviously, and I'm biased with, with him just because I think he's the best, but, um, he pulled it out of people. He was ruthless and I yeah. liked it. That, that, that was my, uh, that was my, uh, personality met well with his. Yeah. 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 I think I, I have those DVDs in my closet, I think still. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, next question uh, from Big Red, Big Red Rife underscore sixty six. Uh, he said, "This is for both of us, I guess, but obviously more for you." Uh, do you ever have those days in the gym where you just cannot get your head in the game? And he said, "If so, how do you work through that without feeling like you're not accomplishing anything?" You know, during that workout session. So I guess, like, I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess he's saying you have those those yep. days in the gym where your head's just not in it, and you, and, you, and you don't feel like you're doing shit. I guess in the gym or accomplishing anything. Real simple. If you don't show up, then you're really not doing anything. Yeah. Everybody has bad days. <laughs> Everybody does. That's true. You know, <clears throat> with as busy as we are with work now and how this company's growing and all all the companies are growing, um, it's a testament to the hard work of myself, my business partners. All of our employees, you, our athletes. Whenever I go to go into the gym, there's days whenever my head is so far up my fucking ass, I literally don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Literally have no clue what to do because I have, you know, five different businesses, 40 employees, release after release after release, planning six months, eight months ahead of time. And then on top of that, three kids, the gymnastics, it's gymnast right now is states and regionals for all the girls. Bro, I don't know what fucking time of day it is some days. I'm like, oh, yeah, like Monday and Wednesday somehow mesh together, but they're two, three days apart. Yeah. Bro. So I think that whenever people get like that, that's normal. Mm -hmm. um, me, I use cardio as my time, not so much my training sessions, because cardio, I'm able to free my mind. I'm able to just push myself. All I got to do is pump my legs, dude. I just got to pump my legs. And I'm mm -hmm. going to pump my legs so that I, can, I cannot focus on anything but my breathing. I cannot focus on anything but, like, I, I don't want to be not dying. Yeah. So I'm going to push myself on cardio so hard that I can't think about anything else but that. Um, so whenever I get overstressed or overwhelmed or anything like that, I do cardio. Because then my head will clear because I can't focus on anything but my breathing. Yeah. Whenever I'm training, like there's days whenever you're fucking lost and you're like, man, I just feel like I'm not, nothing's going to get accomplished. You have to just continue to do it. Go through the motions. Even if you, because if you don't go through the motions, then you're actually not doing anything. Yeah. Like say if you start your workout and you're like, fuck, dude, this sucks. And then all of a sudden, like you catch a wind or you get the pump. Or the good song comes on whenever you're about to do a set of incline dumbbells and you're like, fuck, yeah, it all's clicking. All those days are going to happen. But if you actually don't do anything, like don't go to the gym, don't do cardio, mm -hmm. like go home and eat a shitty meal or go have a beer instead, then you're setting yourself back. Adversity is always going to be there. And if the adversity of the day is not feeling like you're training, feeling like a worthless piece of shit because you're overstressed. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah. Push through it. Yeah, I, I agree too. I think I think a lot of people use cardio as that outlet as well, uh, especially in the morning. I know you're big on well, you do cardio mm -hmm. at night as well, which I do sometimes too. I'll, I'll do it in the morning or at night or sometimes both. But I know for me, it's the same way. Cardio too is just mentally is fucking where you can kind of and you can think about other stuff. Where if you're training and lifting, you don't really want to be thinking about ten other things. But cardio is that time yeah. too where you can kind of do whatever you're doing and still somewhat think about some of that stuff or, or clear your head, I guess, or, or whatever. Oh yeah. 
but not every workout, not every workout is going to be a hundred percent. No, but it's, you, you make an excellent point for him or anybody else watching. It's like, if you don't do it, you're really not doing anything. <laughs> so then you're, then you're well, losing. I, yeah. I mean, like I think a bad workout, I mean, some people might disagree, but a bad workout or any workout is yeah. Better than nothing. So like you said, go yeah. to the motions and get some shit done. Um, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of Instagram influencers and everybody pretend that uh, everything is always going to be hunky dory and everything's going to be perfect and you need to push yourself all the time and you're never going to these bad days. Like, listen, everybody has bad days. And if they're saying don't, uh, you know, no workout uh, or a bad workout isn't as good as no workout or any bullshit like that, do your fuck, go through the fucking motions if you're not feeling it because you're going to catch it. You have to push through it. You got to feel the shit. It's going to yeah. be hard. Uh, uh, to piggyback on that, it's like how many times, and this isn't just for me. I mean, I, I've seen a million people say it. A lot of times that day you're going to the gym, or you're going to lift and you feel like you're, you're not into it. You, you're going there already with the mindset that you're not into it. Sometimes those, at least for me, they're, they're sometimes turned into the best workouts you've had. You know, oh, yeah. you know I, might, I might have that in my head like, fuck, I don't feel like working out. And then I go. And like you said, you catch the pump, you start going, you feel strong maybe that day, good music comes on. And all of a sudden you're, you're in there for an hour and a half, two hours. You're like, this is the best workout I've had in a month. And, and I'm very so glad I, and, and, and that's the whole reason for the gym and for exercise is because it makes you a better person after you're done. Yeah. Like that, that, that's a real statement after you're done working out generally from a general standpoint, you feel better. Yeah, so always. not doing that, like, dude, if I don't do my cardio for a day, I get a little fucking weird. Yeah, Am I addicted to it? Probably. <laughs> but well, like you said, you don't, feel, you know, I, I've never done a workout or even a cardio session and regretted doing it. You know what I mean? You don't feel bad. Like, fuck, I wish I would have done that. You always feel better. Like you said. Oh so, yeah. Oh yeah. But, uh, all right. Yeah. That should, that should answer that. Um, Jay Soto mayor four seven Oh six. He asked, uh, what is the most important thing a supplement company or apparel company, um, as you own both, you know, what is the most important thing that you look for in an actual athlete uh, that you might be thinking about bringing on to the team? Do their every single day morals and values line up with ours? That is the most important thing to us because it's not like, you know, everybody's from a general standpoint, everybody's morals and values, I think, are a lot of the same. Do a good job, work really hard, be a positive person. Mm -hmm. Plays a huge role in everything that we stand for. However, it's very difficult to do on a regular, everyday basis. Yeah. Do people have bad days? Well, sure they do. But from an everyday standpoint, do their actions, their everyday actions reflect upon what we stand for? What do they do every day? Who, who, what have they done for years on end? Like, like for you example, like look at everything that you do every single day. You're not just a one dimensional dude. You are a multi-dimensional, hardworking man in every single aspect of your life. When it comes to you waking up in the morning, what do you do? You wake up in the morning, you wake up at four, four, four o'clock in the fucking morning and work out. Four thirty, five o'clock, you're waking up and working out. Why? Because you have other shit to do throughout the fucking day that you value more important than working out at 10 a.m. Your family, yeah. your work, your money, your everything that you work for in life. So like whenever we have bring someone on as an athlete, that's why we're so selective. That's why we don't have as many athletes as other companies, because motherfucker, I don't want anybody misrepresenting our company for what we stand for. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a rough around the edges, motherfucker. Like I've done some really crazy fucked up shit and, and I've become, uh, a, I guess, a very savage businessman uh, because I've had to become that for the companies. Mm -hmm. uh, but whenever we're bringing people on, I don't want just any schmo. I don't give a fuck if you have a million followers. Good job. I'm glad you work hard. But what type of person are you on an everyday basis inside your community? What do you do every single day for the community of people that follow you and your local community that you interact with every single day? Like. How does that, because in my opinion, those are more valuable than just your followers. Yeah. There's a lot of people that want to hit us up, but I think that, uh, you know, the people that purchase want to see good motherfuckers and just by being a good person and being positive doesn't mean that, like I said, like I said, good motherfuckers, good person. Great. <laughs> good motherfucker is somebody that is actually just relentless at their life. 
like yourself. Everything you do is relentless. It is Dean to a 100% fucking T. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be. And I think that, that whenever, like Vincenzo, we brought on Vincenzo. Why? Because the dude is a true hardworking motherfucker. He's young. He's hungry. He has a great family, crazy core family values. Mm. Um, he grew up in, with his parents. His parents are foster parents to hundreds of kids. They continue to reflect that in our community. He's a gym owner. He's a small business owner in New York. Like, yeah. dude, chalking him up with all of our people. Why? Because that's what we want. Because we know those people are going to live with their emotions on their sleeve and love everything that they do and care about the people in their communities. Yeah, it's good. It's it's funny that you lead, you know, because like, I think a lot of people have that misconception of like, oh, if you have a ton of followers, you're an IFBB pro. Like, you know, like that's what it takes to become, you know, sponsored or, or whatever. But and how you the first thing you talked about was values and morals and stuff like that. And it's when I do the Q and A's on Instagram, you know, I've uh, numerous times people have said, what's the best thing with working with, you know, Axe and Sledge or all American roughneck and that, and that's typically at some point in my answer, that's what I always say about all you guys. It's like, besides what I get or income or supplements and apparel, it's like that to me is kind of like gravy that comes with everything. But I, I, I always say that in almost every one of my answers that it's the family atmosphere and like, what you guys you you and pat and bob and mike um you know what i mean it's like that to me is more just like you said it's the same thing right back to you guys it's like you guys represent everything that i like or i believe in as well so that's i think why we gel so well 100 and the more that uh the year as the years tick by with this company as the months tick by with this company uh well i learn more and more about people i learn more and more about business I learn more and more about my competition. Uh, I learn more and more about my community. Everything, every single day, every single month, every single year. Um, I'm not the same person that I was six months ago. With all that being said, like as we continue to hire employees, the people that are applying for jobs, the people that we're hiring, they're almost overqualified for certain positions. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, like, what are you doing here? Like <laughs> applying for this position. And then I take a step back and I look and I'm like, we have one of the greatest companies to come and work for because we value our employees. We, we have room for exponential growth here at this company. So there's people that are like, I will start at the bottom and I will work to the top because you value your employees. You value my hard work and I will show you that I can work hard. Yeah. Because we do have a great wor working environment. We're going to bust your balls. We're going to fuck with you. Yeah. We're going to give you a <laughs> fucked up nickname. We're going to we're gonna be relentless with it. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do company outings. We're going to do so much cool shit. Because all four of us as owners have worked at shitty companies. Mm -hmm. We've all had shitty bosses. We've all had times when we were like, man, I'd do it fucking better. Well, here at a startup company, such as we are, our third year in business coming up. And I look and I'm like, yeah. Like that's, that's why they're like overqualified people are coming here because they know we value people. Yeah. And, and those are things I don't really say a lot, uh, especially on social media too much, just because I'm continuing to learn. And, and as I continue to learn and hone my craft and we all as business owners hone our craft, I'm going to start talking about it more and more because what we have here is very fucking real. Yeah. And, I, and I've, I've been able to see it firsthand with all the promotions from within, which I know you guys love doing, which is, which is huge for people to, you know, instead of always, because a lot of companies do the opposite and they go and promote, you know, somebody might be busting their ass and they go and promote from outside where you guys We're, promote from within, which is huge. So I am in the business of building motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's, it is though. It comes down to the values and morals, and, and like you said, just being a good person more than anything. Absolutely. Um, here's a good. Here's a dad one for you, Brian Marcinczyk, something like that. I probably butchered that name, but as a dad, uh, what's the best advice you have for someone who, like yourself, works his ass off for himself and his family when it comes to getting enough and then getting enough time to spend with them? I guess. So, what's your best advice for someone who works their ass off? uh for yourself so he must i'm assuming he's self-employed as well i guess 
um, and then still having enough time to spend with the family, which it's the same thing. I mean, we, you have three kids. I have four. It's like, <laughs> listen, listen, this is the, this is why am I self-employed? Why did I start my own companies? A couple reasons. Because I hate authority. I have a big problem with it. Yeah. Big problem with it. Big supporter of freedom and liberty. You can see from yeah. behind me. So, but I do have a problem with authoritative, authoritative figures. Um, my dad, just start with my dad. Fuck yeah, fuck him. Why? Because <laughs> I can do it better, you know. Uh, but the reason I did that was because I wanted to reap as many benefits as possible from my own personal hard, hard work. That's mm -hmm. why people go into business for themselves. Um, but when it comes to family, I have three kids, uh, two, one 13, one seven and then the other one's 11 months so all the hunky dory pu shit pushed aside motherfucker you just got to do the work there's no i can't sugarcoat anything i don't spend a lot of time with my kids i don't i don't see them a lot i wish i could see them more i see my kids in the mornings i take i wake up in the mornings at six o'clock i do my cardio I get my coffee. I, set, I get the coffee ready. I might have something small to eat with the kids. See, you see Adeline, she does homeschooling right now. So I see her for two minutes. Emmy getting ready for school in the morning and I drive Emmy to school every morning. And then I come to this office. And then I work at this office until seven, eight o'clock every night. Mm -hmm. That doesn't leave me a whole lot of time to see my kids. We go home, get dinner ready. The kids come home from gymnastics with Hannah at around 8 30, 9 o'clock every single night. We have dinner ready. We eat dinner as a family from 8 30, 9, 9 30. As a family, we eat dinner every single night at 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. Every single night. We have dinner at 9 p.m. So mm -hmm. I spend 30 minutes with my kids doing that. We clean dinner up, get the kids all cleaned up, and then we sit down on the couch together for another 15, 20 minutes. Bro, that's less than two hours a day with my kids. Yeah. I don't see my kids more than two hours a day. That breaks my fucking heart. I wish I could spend five hours a day with them. But in all reality, I can't. Why? Because we're running, fuck, we're running massive companies. They're doing incredible things for communities, incredible things for families. We employ over 42 fucking people now. We've donated money to so many charities and do so many great things for our community that that is a very big deal. So if I say, hey, everybody, I'm going to cut back time at work. I'm going to cut back thing, doing things for my community all so I can spend more time with my kids. No. You know what I'm going to tell my kids? This is how you do shit. This is how you do shit in real life. Yeah. This is what you do. You fucking work. I don't want to hear you complain. I don't want to hear you bitch because you're fucking able-bodied, you're smart, you're healthy, and you can do incredible things in this world all by yourself doing hard work. So, because at the end of the day, what are your what is your self what is your life aspirations? My life aspirations are doing great things for people in this world, and I'm going to do it and I'm going to show my kids that it's possible to happen. Mm -hmm. because I can say a million things, but if I don't do it, then my kids just hear me talk. Yeah. My kids watch me every day and that's how our life goes. Is it better than other people's lives? No, it's just how we do things in our home. Everybody, there's a million different ways to skin a cat and be a good person. But in order for all these incredible things that are happening right now at Axe and Sledge, all American roughneck, American made nutrition, our communities here in Western Pennsylvania, without this type of work ethic, those things don't happen. And my kids aren't suffering. Yeah, my yeah. kids are doing very well. <laughs> We're financially perfectly fine. It's very good. But <clears throat> in order to do incredible things, you have to work at it. You have to. And uh, that's the type of example that I, I'm leading here. It's the environment I grew up in with my father. Um, he was a workaholic, and yeah. I'm a I think I'm a much more intense version of my dad. Yeah, that, that was just what you just said. Example that—that's what I was going to say. Is you're you're leading by example and showing them, which 
we, we there's a whole nother discussion nowadays nobody wants to work so you're you're sh you're showing them and leading an example but in like and for like the question said, that, oh, i'm sorry no, no i was gonna say, say for the question it's kind of like that thing where it, it it is what you want your life to be if yeah. you want to spend time with your kids then you spend more time with your kids yeah. But I'm I'm in a position right now where if I spend more time with my kids, I take more time away from my businesses and my business are, do, are doing pretty incredible things that people only dream of happening. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that I don't spend time with my kids. I, whenever I'm with my kids, I'm present. Yeah. I'm present for the two hours a day that I get to spend with them. They are my they have my attention. And, they and have all of my attention. everything with the businesses over here that's doing so well is also in return providing a great life for the kids as well. You know what I mean? So, and that, that's, that's my answer too, to the question. It's like, you still just prioritize the way you need to prioritize and you spend the time that you can with them. And like you said, make sure you're actually present the time you, you are with them or whatever. So I'm, it's the same way here. I mean, we're all over the place during the week. And that's why like on the weekends, I always try to spend obviously more time. Uh, yeah. Than, and, than and, work, and, so. Dude, I think that that's everybody that works full time and has kids. Oh, yeah. Especially I don't think, in, you know, it, like I said, it's not one person's doing is better than another's. I think that if you have kids in a full time fucking job, <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, you're busy, you're you know, down. and and that's where the phrase hard work and motherfucker comes in. Especially like, being self-employed, I think, too, because, you know, a lot of a lot of people that aren't self-employed think self-employed is great, which it is. But I'm saying most professions i mean maybe not all but most professions i know if you're self-employed and own your own business you actually work way more hours than somebody that's an employee you know what i mean <laughs> so it's like you it's it's give and take or whatever you know i love being i've been self-employed now for going on like 18 years or whatever so yeah i have the freedom to do what i want but at the same time it's yeah you, you make other sacrifices you know in other areas but it is what it is like you said you just got to get it done and make the time oh yeah Oh, yeah. All right, cool. We'll hit the, the next one, uh, D Murphy underscore 16. What was the moment that you uh, realized that you made it? Uh, from bodybuilding to business, it seems everything that you touch is successful. Uh, he said, I know it's very hard fucking work, but when did you actually realize that all your work was paying off? I don't, I don't know if I feel it yet. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe, like, a lot of times, I think this question can be asked to a lot of people that others uh, feel are successful. But I think if you ask any person that's successful at all, when did you make? When did you feel you made it? I, I imagine most people say, "I still don't think I have made it." Is that kind you know, of your answer? I, like it? There's what you know, everybody knows the whole work aspect. Uh, I mm -hmm. thought I'd feel different whenever we made a million dollars. I thought it, we'd feel different when we made ten million dollars. I thought we'd feel different when we made $20 million. I thought I'd feel different. I don't. Yeah. Um, all I see is, is the opportunity to do bigger and better things because like it, it's all, it's possible. Yeah. Like I'm already achieving things that I never thought I would achieve. And I'm like, all right, the second that like we got there, I'm like, I thought I'd feel different. I thought I'd feel different. I don't feel different. I think I want more. I think I want to do something different. I think I want to, I want to push harder. Like whenever we're hiring people, we're hired. Like my dad had 26 employees at peak time at his company, bro. There was a ton of people. That's a ton of people. Yeah. Now, whenever we have over 40, I'm like, we need more. We need at least 10 more motherfuckers at this company. And I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. I take such pride in, in people receiving paychecks from our company and that's why we produce some of the best supplements on the planet. Mm. That's why we take such pride in everything that we do, because there are families that are relying on, on us as owners in our direction and our, our, our fucking just our attitudes going after life. So um, I, I, did I make it? I, I mean, in the eyes of some people, you know, they could say, yeah, you made it. But I, uh, I don't think I made it because I have so many more things I want to fulfill in life. Like success is defined by, a, a, you know, how people say that um, uh, like everybody, su uh, everybody uh, defines success differently. Yeah. Everybody says it. 
Well, yeah. I think that as I've continued to work and build companies and myself and other people, um, I'm continuing to redefine what success is in my own personal views. Like everybody, uh, success, money, first thing every, that pops in your head. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, money's important. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants a lot of it. But um, whenever, like I said, whenever we have created all uh, the amount of money that we have and everything that we're doing, well, I could take the money and run, but that don't get me anywhere. I'm yeah. like, I want, I want more. And I'm like, what do I want though? And then I realized whenever we hire another person or see other, our employees like buying new items or getting a house or buying a vehicle, I'm like, bro, fuck yeah, this is cool. It, these things start, they, they, they're bringing something out of me that I didn't know existed. I didn't know I would feel the way I do. So uh, <clears throat> that's, that's a, that's a, I take it, I take it to heart fucking yeah. very serious about it because it's changing people's lives. And uh, you know, if, if people that listen to the podcast know, like I'm, I'm fascinated by the human brain and, and people's interactions and their own personal actions and why they do them. And just watching our employees grow as people and be promoted and do things that they didn't even think they were capable of. The money, the money is important because without the money, you can't have those things happen. So money will always be number one because that's the driving force in doing things in this world. Yeah, you can't. There's no getting around that. These people don't get promoted, and these people don't be able to get to do the things that they're doing in their life without the driving force of financial freedom within a company. Mm. So yeah. all those things, but but you just as as an owner, you have to understand that. Um, you as a person need to evolve. That's what we do here. We just continue to evolve. And a lot of us are seeing these things and be like, man, this is way cooler than I thought. Yeah. Thought. Even, even from where I'm at with, with the companies, it's like, it's, it's, and I know you and, and the other uh, three as owners, like you said, it's, you, you reach, I think a certain type of success, but I know firsthand every release we have gets bigger and bigger and bigger, which obviously it just keeps that drive alive in you guys and keeps the excitement alive. And I know your personality is obviously firsthand. And I know we, we always try to just do more and more fun stuff and exciting stuff and come up with new crazy shit. So um, yeah, I, I think like you said, people define it as just a money, but then you make that money, but you, you know, you guys are having fun with everything and scaling these businesses as, as, as big as they can go. So I know we really haven't scratched the surface yet. So Oh yeah. <clears throat> Good deal. That I think that was all five questions that I pulled. So I think that was awesome. Cool. I liked it. No, these are, these are great. I'm excited. I'm excited to see, I know you sent the list of people over that you had lined up. So uh, yeah. I'm excited to see everybody's questions post about it and tell everybody, make sure they're watching because, um, you know, I, 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 I think that um, the more, the more in-depth, questions that people hear, the more in-depth sides of uh, a lot of people from our industry, the more it opens up to understand that, ev that mm, everybody's just a normal person doing extraordinary things. Mm. And it opens up the opportunity for the people listening to understand that they just being normal people are very capable of doing extraordinary things. Sure. It's all based on hard work. It, it yeah. really truly is. Yeah. And that, that's why I wanted to do this. And I talked to you before I even started it and got your opinion, but th that's, I, you know, there's different influencers or IFBB pros that are on podcasts and stuff like that, but it's usually a couple of guys talking back and forth. And I just thought me having some access to people, it would just give some other people a chance to have their questions brought to you guys firsthand. And uh, so that's, that's why I wanted to start this and do this. So absolutely yeah fucking awesome i love it yeah, thanks so, for having me on that's it though man no uh, thank you for coming on thank you for taking the time i know you gotta run and uh i'll be up there i'll see you on well i'll be up sunday so i'll probably see you monday i guess first thing monday morning i love it brother thank you all right thank you so much man i'll see you soon we'll see you all right bye